whenever you work with Entity Framework, the default schema for the identity tables is DBO and we have the default built-in names that are already configured for the identity tables. But have you ever wondered on how you can change the default table names or the default schema for the identity tables? If so, you are at the right video. My name is Brugin and welcome to .NET Mastery. If you have not subscribed to the channel, make sure to do that right now. It's free for you, but it does help the channel grow. In today's video, we will see how to change the default schema and table name in .NET Identity. I typically like to start from a new project, so let me switch to Visual Studio and create a new project. I will create MVC application. Let me select that here. Let me call that Identity Schema and let me hit the next button. I will be using .NET 8 here. Authentication type, I will select individual accounts. That way I will have the pre-setup for the ASP.NET tables. With that configured, let me create the project. Perfect, we have the project here. Let me create a model. I want to create a new model here and I will give it a name of, let's say, product. Create two properties there. One will be ID and the other one, let me give it name of the product. Now because we selected identity, if you examine program.cs, we have the default connection that is already configured and that connection is in appsettings.json. Let me give it the project name, ASP.NET, and then identity schema. Remove the quid here. And perfect. Looks good. Our application will also have a DB context here. And there we have to create a DB set. That will be for the product model that we added. Let me add that here. And the table name, I will call that as products. Now if we add a migration, it will create a migration for this product table as well as the default tables that are there in the identity framework or the .NET identity that we added. So let me open the package manager here and run the command add migration. I will call that initial here and let me wait for that. Perfect, the migration is added. Let me run the command update database and take a look at the tables. I will open SQL Server here and let me wait to see the migration. That completed. Let me go back here. I will refresh the database and we have our database with the table name. You can see the products table and all the ASP.NET tables, they are in the default DBO schema. Now typically it is a good idea to have certain schemas in your database when the table grows. What I would like is the ASP.NET default tables that we have here. They should be in a schema with the name of identity. And let's say the product here, move that to a different schema of the name product. Along with that, we have products here, but let me rename the table name to be product. One way you can do that is rather than products here, you can change that to be product. But if you want to explicitly set something on the DB set class here, we have to basically add a table and there we can specify the name like product. With that, if you save and if you add a migration here, Rename data annotation. That will rename the table here. You can see it is renaming and that looks good. Let me update the database. Perfect. Now if I go back here, refresh, tables, and it is product. Now how can we change the schema name from DBO? to let's say product itself. That can also be done on the class here. We have product. To modify that schema name here, along with the table name, we can define schema. 
let's say we want it in a product schema let me save that and we need to add one more migration i will call that change schema name let me add that migration here and let me run the command update database with that configured let me go back here refresh again and great you can see the schema name is modified but now the main question how will we modify the schema names for the default identity tables because for them we do not have an entity like we have for product for all the default classes we can do that directly in the application db context where we are inheriting the identity db context right here we have override let me call that and it is on model creating there is one property that you can set here where you can say builder dot has default schema and we can say if we do not explicitly specify anything the default schema is dbo and that is the default schema if you take a look at the tables so we are making sure that we are covering our default schema now we need to change the schema for identity tables if you have not worked with identity basically you can see there is asp.net and then there is actual name of the table so asp.net role claims the table name that you can use to reference in visual studio is actually role claims but it is not only role claim rather than asp.net we will have to replace that with identity so for the asp.net users here this will be identity user without the plural let me show that here on builder.entity we can define the product entity but i want to use the identity user entity and that will basically point to the asp.net user stable that is renamed here in the code to identity so asp.net is replaced with identity and then this users will be singular and that is identity user if you have to work on this entity you can call this anything lambda expression you can say e goes to and then e dot we have a method here to table whatever we define here as name that will become the new table name let me call that users we will add a comma here and we also have schema name we want to add them to the identity schema so let me add that i need a semicolon here and perfect that looks good let me copy and paste that a few times next table that i want to work on is the asp.net role claims so let me copy role claim without the plural here and we will replace that that will be whoops i cannot find that that will be identity role claim but if you notice there is an error here because it expects something in the key column now we do not know what that will be but we know that will be an id so we will pass the generic string here and that's all that is needed we need a table name here let me call that role claims here and identity schema the next table that we have is asp.net roles and that will be identity role here table name let me call that roles next we have the user claim let me copy that there also we will have to add the key of type string and the table name here will be user claims let me go back we have the user login copy and modify that we need the string here and the table name we will rename that to be user logins next we have the asp.net user roles table let me work on that that will also expect a key here and it will be user roles table finally asp.net users we already did that here we have the user token 
before I copy that, I should have copied one more entry. And that is user token. Perfect. With that, let me add a new migration. I'll give it a name of identity changes. And once that is done, let me update the database. Perfect. Let's go back here and see the final change. You can see we have identity schema for all the identity related tables. And we did that by basically overriding the on model creating in DB context and toggling the entity that we want. I hope you enjoyed the video and make sure to like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you have not done that already. I will see you guys in some other programming videos related to .NET. Till then, happy coding!